about today's top stories. We have Marshall Gore from the African Nations Cup UK and David Doherty, president of the Team Nigeria UK. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you both doing today? I'm great, Andy, and uh, it's good for you to have us here. Good. It's, thrill it's thrilling to have you here. I want to talk firstly about the Premier League because we've seen... I mean, some crazy games today, haven't we? Let's start off with the Manchester City-Aston Villa match, which could have gone either way so many times, couldn't it? Yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting game. And um, I, uh, I couldn't get off my seat because there was action, end-to-end -end action. Um, I think, again, with City, the performance today typifies uh, their season as well. It was a home game, a um, lot of pressure on their side. Um, I think they just shaded it, and uh, Villa obviously wanted it because they're still slightly involved in the relegation fight. So it was a hugely contested uh, match, and uh, um, I think credit for City that they were resilient to get the third goal um, in the last five minutes of the game, which is which is which is good for 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 them because all hope seems lost um, for ch for a championship um, chase now. So this this can be a slight lift of. Uh, of, of their spirit. That's right. I mean, it's essential for Manchester City, isn't it? Champions League. Absolutely. They need. They need to do all they can. I mean, to stay in the Champions League um, 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 role. So um, I think today's uh, winning. I mean, it's absolutely a relief for them. You know, um, because I thought Aston Villa was, you know, going to sit back and um, and just allow City to cover. But actually, they, 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 they went out there, you know. Made a proper to, game of it, didn't they? Absolutely. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a superb performance from them. Absolutely. And, and another result that went Manchester City's way was Liverpool only, only managing a draw. It, that sort of, for me, looks like it's going to be impossible for them to get in the Champions League now. Without a doubt, I think um, um, lately Liverpool have kind of like fizzled out of the momentum. I think the, um, the blow was delivered by Villa in the semi-final of, uh, of the FA Cup, they right. were knocked out. So they I bossed think them, didn't they? Yeah, I think, I think, I think that affected their, their spirits now, and um, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to get that fourth, fourth spot, you know, and um, I can't see them um, um, coming back to, to, to life and, uh, and put in a challenge. Today's result against West Brom, resilient West Brom, I have to say, was a big blow for, for their quest for, for fourth place. You know? Well, I mean, that's right, and actually on social media there are a lot of Liverpool fans now suggesting maybe Brendan Rodgers isn't the right man to manage the side. Would you agree with that? Uh, not at all. I think I think they should just give him time to you know to continue what he started. Is that is a thing you know to to go out there and lose in the FA Cup like what uh, Marshall I just mentioned is that I think it was just because they lost you know in that FA uh, FA Cup. So it's it's like they're struggling to come back, you know, to that form. I mean I mean losing out to their you know key players that are injured as well. I mean yeah. like storage and everything. I think they can still bounce back, you know, and try and do I mean probably the, the, the rest of the games, you know, they haven't had at, at hand, they can still, you know, try and do something better. Okay, brilliant. Look we'll we'll have one more Premier League match to discuss, then we'll move on. We've got to briefly touch on Leicester City's great escape. They've, they've beaten Burnley now. Yeah. I mean, what is this? Four wins on the road for them. Right? Absolutely. And they were, they were supposed to go down. Absolutely. It's fantastic. I mean, they're saying he's going to be a happy man now, winning four, you know, four games in a row. You know, they've actually only just won I mean, three in the past. I mean, I mean going to four, I mean, it's something, I mean, I mean out, of, out of this world, you know, they, they actually wanted it more. Yeah. Than, you know, than, than anyone. So I think I think they will survive. You think they'll survive? Do you agree? I think I think potentially they will. Yeah. And then what what is it most important about this is that there was a lot of talk of um, Nigel Pearson to yeah. to be sacked. I think um, uh, a couple of weeks uh, before they got into this winning streak. You know, I think this is a very good example. Sometimes that if you keep faith in your manager and you stay as a unit, results will come. But you need to be patient. And for Leicester, what a time to pick up form. Wow. Like you have said, Absolutely. the last three wins have been um, emphatic, and they've really brought life into into them and today again to defeat Burnley it's an incentive it's like a six yeah. pointer as well it is they end the rest uh, for survival with Burnley and to defeat um, Burnley it, it, it just consolidates their position now and uh, and I think uh, it's it's all looking good for them but there's still a lot to play for it's the romance of football isn't it what yeah. what a finish we're seeing from them let's have a talk about uh, La Liga now and Barcelona I mean they're such a great side aren't they they really are impressive but they had what has to be described as 
an incredible victory. 2-0 against Espanyol, despite the fact that for almost the entire second half they were down to 10 men. This is a big result for Barcelona, isn't it? It is, you know, because if you look at Espanyol, I mean, there's, I mean, they are a Spanish side that keeps the ball very well as well. Yeah. Just like the bus, I mean, the, the Barca side. So, I mean, you know, winning today, I mean, it's something, you know, very, very, very good for Barcelona to do. But, I mean, I don't doubt them for, for once. Like I said, you know, three days ago when I was there, I said, you know, Barcelona this time around, we won't, we, with the three, you know, with, with the three players that, that they've got up front, I think, you know, they, 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 they are there to win both the Champions League and, and the La Liga this year. There was a nice stat that I read earlier which suggests that Messi, Suarez and Neymar, they've now got 97 goals for the season. Three more and they will equal Eto, Henri and Messi's 100 for the season. And they've got five more games to do it. Absolutely. This is amazing. It's, it's, it's amazing. When I saw them dis dismiss Paris Saint-Germain, you know... Oh, I, didn't they, yeah, Paris Saint-Germain are a good yeah. side. They, they gave Chelsea a good, very good running for, yeah. for their money. You know, they're a very good side as well. But the manner in which Barcelona dismantled them, mm -hmm. you know, just sends the message. And, and today, going into the game against Espanol, you only knew that there was going to be one win. And you've said it correct as well, that the, the combination that uh, Neymar... Messi and Suarez, you know, when they started, it was a bit, the clicking was, 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 was not on. It took a while to gel. Yeah, it took a while yeah. to gel. But now it has all become formidable, come into place now. They're like an auto machine when, when they go on fire, you know. I'm, I'm a bit of a Madrid man, but you, you just can't stop admiring them, I have to say. It's just incredible. Very, very quickly, then, the, their opponents in the Champions League, they are going to be facing Bayern Munich. Bayern have just beaten Hertha Berlin 1-0. Is that them crowned German champions, do you think? Um, yeah, because I don't see anybody stopping them, 15 yeah. points ahead of everybody. So, I mean, with the form they are now, you know, despite having some of their key players not, not in the team, yeah. and they can still pull up, I mean, a, a side that can still, you know, perform at that level, you know, I mean, with the last Champions League game that they played, I think they, they, they have something, you know, that everyone has to look at. Absolutely. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. We'll be back again with you again in the second half. African Cup of Nations UK and uh, President and David Doherty, President of Team Nigeria UK, are here to give me their best blue spills now as well. Gentlemen, I don't need you to pose. I just need you to talk about the brilliant football that we should anticipate tomorrow, which is Arsenal versus Chelsea. Mouthwatering or what? It's a, an epic, um, very promising. And I think for Chelsea, this is um, the biggest test of the, of the season. Um, they're going to Arsenal, uh, where Arsenal is at the peak of their form. Yeah, and really are, aren't they? They're yeah, looking yeah, incredible. There's Arsenal. a lot of stake for, for Arsenal. It's just a pity that there's, there's a huge point, point gap. So I think that will favour Chelsea in terms of the way they'll, they'll, they'll set up. I think they'll be more compact and predatory and wait for, for Arsenal to come at them and hit on a counter-attack. Okay. But then um, it will wait to be seen in terms of how Arsenal will capitalise with their position. We saw it with United when Chelsea gave them a lot of position. Right. They did not utilise it very well. But we know also that when, Af when Arsenal has been given position, they've made the most out of, out of it in terms of uh, their attacking potential with uh, Sanchez, Juro, Ramsey. They've got a very, very good potent at attack. So it, it's going to be an interesting game. And um, how, how Mourinho will set out... Um, obviously, be very defensive, KG, and then uh, use the pace of Hazard, and perhaps maybe play Ramirez and uh, and Matic compact again in midfield, and looking for trust to to break with 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 William. It's going to be an interesting. Game. It will be. I mean, one man who is, I think, going to have a lot of attention will be Cesc Fabregas making his first return in opposition colours. How do you think he's going to get on? I think I think he can. I mean, he's, I mean, he's capable. I mean, he's experienced all day. You know the pressure, and um, um, he's going to deliver. I mean, he knows how to do it. He's good at he's good at what, what he does very well. I mean, rating. You know the midfield. I mean, I was watching one of the ratings. You know, around himself, Sa Sanchez, and, um, and and the rest of um, Arsenal players. I think he's got more, 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 more. I mean, what do you call it? More advantage. You know, better than them. He keeps the ball very well. He has the eyes. You know, to give the true passes and everyone. So okay. I think he's okay. He's going to do very well. Tomorrow. We'll see how we get on. Now, guys, I want to talk about the African Nations Cup UK. We haven't got as long as I was hoping for. So, firstly, importantly, tell me what it is. It's a community football tournament, organised by 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 Africans living in the diaspora, 
for Africans also playing football and living in the diaspora. It's a huge tournament, in, in, including uh, 20 teams that participate in, in it. And the FA has actually named it the biggest grassroots community football tournament. Amazing. Nigeria, favourites, do you think? They've won it three times before, quite, quite recently, 2009, 10 and 12. Absolutely. Um, that's, the, that's the open age. But, I mean, this time around, we're, I'm, uh, we're in charge of the, the, the junior age, which is the under-16, and um, we, we won it for the first time in 2014. And hopefully this year, again, I mean, we're, we're still going to be come back and, and do what we did last as well. Brilliant stuff. Well, guys, we've got less than a minute. So quickly tell me, when is the tournament kicking off? The tournament is kicking off on the 30th of May at um, um, West Ham Memorial Grounds in, um, in East London. Great. Opening ceremony plans? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. it's going to be big. Mm -hmm. yes, so most important of all, I want to know how can people find out more? Because we haven't had the time we hoped for to talk about it. So is there a website they can go to? Um, it's www.africannationscupuk.com. And they can find us on, on Facebook, African Nations Cup UK, our Facebook page. So Facebook, and let's go to the website one more time. www.africannationscupuk.com. Fantastic, guys. I know you'll be back in again throughout the next few weeks, so we'll talk more again. But thank you so much for your time. Really do appreciate it. You're so welcome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks.